In the previous video, we had just finished making these shapes on our CNC machine that we're going to be using for our beauty panels on our custom subwoofer box. What steps do we need to take to go from those raw shapes to these finished details? Now, if you watched the previous video, you know that I had to cut half of the shapes because my CNC router wasn't big enough to cut the full shape. So we're gonna dive back into making these half pieces whole. So here are our shapes for the front of the enclosure and I've cut all the tabs off of them now that they are off of the router. Now, the other thing I've added here is I've just CA glued a little rib between the two sides. And the reason for that is without this rib, these tend to kind of flex towards each other and I don't want them flexing when I go to copy them on the router. In hindsight, I could have included this as part of the design when I cut it out on the CNC, but no big deal to just quickly cut these sticks to that dimension there and then add that glue. Now the other thing that kind of helps me with my design here is this side here and this side are parallel to each other and I know that dimension. So on the table saw, I cut that exact dimension to these pieces of wood. This will just save me some manual router time as I really only need to router this profile here. The other thing is, since I obviously only have half of this shape, the thing that will help is when I go to do the other side here, I don't have to worry about that potentially being tweaked out of alignment. It's always going to be parallel because the board that I've already cut and has perfectly parallel edges on the table saw is going to be my basis for the shape. So to cut my new full pieces to those shapes, I'm gonna be using this bit that I use all the time, the quarter inch spiral flush trim. I start with applying template tape to the back side of these pieces. That's going to hold each of my templates to my new piece that I'm copying to as I cut things on the router. So again, we have that flush trim bit loaded up in the router here, cutting away that excess material. And then you can see I also need to remove that material from the inside of the shape as well. And then we finish things up with cutting that shape that's going to be for my outside profile. So now that we have our shapes completely made, we can start doing all the detail work on these pieces using the various different router bits to add shape and profile. Let's start with focusing on these side profiles that are gonna be on the side of the box. I know that I wanna add a chamfer to this edge here and here, but what I wanna do is I wanna maximize that chamfer so the cut goes all the way up to the edge of the piece. What I mean by that is if we look at a chamfer bit, this bearing needs to ride against a surface in order to cut the chamfer down below. But if we only have a single piece like this, that bearing is going to leave a little flat spot and we're not gonna maximize that angle of cut. So what I need to do is make a third extra piece that's going to sit between my two finished pieces. That way we have something for the bearing to ride against. So this should give you a better idea what I mean. I've got my sandwich of three pieces now completely flush trimmed together and the bearing is going to ride against that middle piece and you can see that I've adjusted the cutting flute so that it goes all the way through the bottom piece. So I'll make one cutting pass and then I'll flip this over and I'll do the other. So check it out guys. Here we have it, a fully maximized cut. With this on a flat surface, you can really see how I've maximized that angle. So now when we attach this to the subwoofer enclosure, it's going to have a nice seamless transition from this surface to the chamfer to the surface that it is attached to. Now, if you remember that trim ring that I made that will go around my insert, I used the same technique by attaching this to an additional piece of material and maximizing that angle on that as well. With the piece separated, you can again see how it flows nicely into the material that it's going to be attached to. And again, the whole reason that I made this piece is a lot of times when you do an insert, you might tape everything off and then use body filler to make this surface here. But because I made it out of wood instead, I know that it's a perfect 45 degree chamfer. I also won't have to mess around with doing the body filler and doing a ton of sanding. This is going to be nearly perfect right off the bat. So now I can turn my attention to doing more detail work on the insert piece here. I'm gonna start with doing a chamfer around the inside window of our sponsor logo. Speaking of sponsors, I do wanna take a quick second to thank these guys here, our sponsor for this video, New Concepts. New Concepts has a wide variety of power wire and power distribution parts that are perfect for wiring your car audio system. I used them to completely wire the amplifier rack that I made that we are using on this build, and I've used them for many years long before I started the channel and have 
always been happy with their quality and value. The wiring for that amp rack turned out awesome, so if you want to see my video on that, come on over to the channel and check out new concepts for wiring your next car audio system at the links down in the video description. Let's get back on into adding that chamfer. That chamfer just gives us a nice unique look on the front, but now what I need to do is on the back side, I need to add a pocket for our little pieces of acrylic to fit down inside of. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to turn this over and I'm gonna use this rabbiting bit here. And the rabbiting bit is going to cut a half inch into the material and it's going to cut as deep up into the material as I adjust it out of the table. In this case, that distance out of the table is the sum of the pieces of acrylic plus the thickness of the vinyl material as it wraps around to the back side. So let's make this cut. Man, I really like how those acrylic pieces look on the inside there. And you can see since we've added that pocket that they completely fit flush up inside of the piece. The last bit of detail work that I need to do on this piece here is I wanna use this bull nose bit to add three lines on each side, which will just give extra depth and dimension to this otherwise flat area on the piece. I've got my workpiece template taped and held in position to my table so that it's not going to move around. To do this is really just a bunch of layout work because I'm going to be using this straight guide from Mobile Solutions along with this guide bushing on the router. You can see that the guide bushing fits in this channel so that we can guide exactly where we want the cut of the router to go. I need to lay out centering lines for where I want that cut to be, but I also need to have a stopper plate so that the router will butt up against that because I want to stop each of the cuts at an angle right here matching this surface. So here is what that bull nose bit added to the front of this panel here. And by having that angled stopper plate, you can see that obviously each of these lines is going to stop at an angle that matches that angle there. I really like the design that those added to the panel and how they carry into this chamfer here. Once we wrap this with the vinyl, that's going to look super cool. Now I need to assemble the side pieces on the enclosure, and for this, I'm just using CA glue. To attach the pieces to the front of the enclosure, I will carefully do the layout work to make sure that they are centered, and then I will CA glue those as well. So here we have it, guys, the finished router details and beauty panels added to this enclosure. I think that the side details we added here are going to do a great job of matching the vehicle DNA, making this box look like it's meant to be in the vehicle. And I love the simple elegance of the shaping here and the other details we added for the sponsor panel that are going to make this enclosure look more unique. So now we need to get this enclosure wrapped with upholstery materials and we'll of course be covering that in the next video. Don't forget next time you are doing wiring on your car audio build, definitely check out our show sponsor, New Concepts. I've used them for many years, long before I started the channel and I think you guys will like them too. Check them out at the link down below. Also, thanks to Anthony, Mike, Mo, Jerry, Marcos, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible and a big thank you to you for tuning in and watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.